this nostalgia is... This is the premiere episode of WPIX. Um, there is still recorded evidence of this somewhere. Uh, probably in our parents' house, unfortunately. I believe it is on the Mark Schechner tape. <laughs> the Mark Schechner group. I don't remember that. I remember it being a blue tape, though, like a navy blue tape. Uh, it was, I think, just white and black writing. Anyway, go on. <coughs> Anyways, um, some of the most memorable things is um, when we first did it, it was such a big deal that we could record voice, like... It kind of dates us a little bit where, like, Jill got involved. Like, it was, like, really interesting to us. And um, she used to make a sound, which I can't do. Um, kind of like that. A lot of saliva in there. You basically gargle it and say, Gweeg. Um, and so that was the first act we had. We featured yeah. Jill. And she sang a song uh, through Gweegs, which was really funny. And um, basically... Uh, we wanted a second number because we were all laughing at the first one. So what we did is we said, sing us the Gweek Blues. And then at that point, I flipped it over to the radio and perfectly synced was the... Um, saxophone solo. The saxophone zone of Kokomo. And uh, it synced so well, we were like, oh my god, this is so awesome, like a real radio show. And so I'd flip back over and just be like, and do our call sign, you know, WPIX. Flip it back over. The new vacation spot, Kokomo. It just kind of interrupted that, but we were very, very pleased on how it's, you know, that. synced like a real radio and station. And then it, it just, actually, if you've ever heard something like a Daniel Johnson tape, that's exactly what it sounds like. I think it's the same technique. I don't mean to, like, make it sound too high-tech or pretentious or anything, but then you hear, like, the tape dub. Then you hear the Urkel dance from Family Matters from TGIF. Paul thought it would be really funny to record that. Um, and then, and then you got into the real meat and potatoes of the episode, which included George the Gorilla beating on, uh, me. Uh, I tried to talk about the Ian Theater, mm -hmm. which was, coincided with the art projects we were doing at that time, and I actually had a written list of about 30 movie titles, and, like, describing them really quickly, and those were all playing at the Ian Theater <laughs> concurrently. <laughs> yeah. They, I, how anyone made any box office revenue <laughs> off of being featured at the Ian Theater, I don't know. But, uh... It's all concession sales at D&D. <laughs> <laughs> the Gas Puff Cafe. At that point, Paul started throwing coins at me, and I got so frustrated. Um, <laughs> and he was like, everyone loves you, Ian. They're throwing money. <laughs> and I said, if people don't stop throwing money, I'm going to leave. And they said, they're laughing at you, Ian. <laughs> they don't believe you. <laughs> and yeah. then he flicked. Then there was, um, click to Find Young Cannibals. Mm -hmm. Canaan. Uh, singing, of course, their big hit, and in between that, George the Gorilla would be beating on me, and Paul would flip back and forth while I was incapacitated, <laughs> like, flip on the radio, flip back to me, and start kicking me. Um, then, uh, then, I, I think... I think at some point, whatever the finale of the episode was, or a lot of episodes didn't have a finale, like, I just remember us, you know the tape running out and us looking at each other sort of discouraged, like, oh, that's it. Because it would be like something we would spend our weekends doing for a couple years until we moved in a new house and Paul discovered girls. 